Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video we will be looking at how to install uh, GlusterFS on our CentOS 7 machines. In the previous video we saw about uh, some of the concepts or some of the terms that are used in GlusterFS and we went through this notes and we went through different types of volumes that we can create and in this video it's purely about how to install different components of GlusterFS on your CentOS 7 machines. So for this video, I've got three machines, Gluster 1, Gluster 2, and Gluster Client. So all are just basic CentOS 7 machines. I haven't installed any additional packages or anything. You can use it uh, on a virtual machine or um, uh, you can use uh, Linux containers as me, or you can use in physical machines. So it doesn't matter as long as you have CentOS 7 as your operating system. Okay, so we will be installing the server components on Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. We will be creating a storage pool. We will be starting the GlusterFS services. And then uh, we will be installing the GlusterFS client site package on the, uh, the client machine. Okay, so I'm going to go to my terminal here. And if I show you, I've already got uh, these three machines. So this one is the terminal that I'm logged into. The Gluster 1 machine here, you can see it here. And on my second tab, I've logged into Gluster 2, that's the second storage node. And on the third tab here, I've logged into my uh, Gluster client machine. Okay, so I've got these three machines here, which are just Linux containers, and this is my host machine, uh, which is an Ubuntu machine. So if I do LXC list, so you can see here I've got three Linux containers. All of them are CentOS 7, Gluster 1, Gluster 2, and Gluster Client. Okay, so I'm going to go to Gluster 1, and if I show you etc OS release, you can see here it's CentOS and 7. So all of these containers, Gluster 1, Gluster 2, and Gluster Client are all CentOS 7. Okay, so now... Um, we are going to set up Gluster 1 and Gluster 2 and the package we will be needing is GlusterFS server. It's not provided by default from the official repository. You need to install this package first, CentOS release Gluster, which provides, which is a repository, which provides access to all these other packages. Okay, so I'm on Gluster 1. I'm going to install CentOS release uh, Gluster. Okay, so that's installed and now it would have created a new repository file in etcm.repos.d CentOS gluster 7repo So I'm going to edit this file because there is a small change that's required at the moment you can see here There are a couple of repositories one is the main repository CentOS gluster 7 and the other one is the uh, the test version which is the uh, the the bleeding edge version or the latest one so i want to enable this repository which is kind of stable so i'm going to enable this from 0 to 1 and i'm going to disable this repository so change 1 to 0 all right so now i should be able to install the glusterfs server package yum search glusterfs and you can see here now, I should have shown you before installing CentOS release server, you wouldn't see all these packages because these are all provided by the CentOS release uh, server package. And the only thing we will be installing is GlusterFS server. So once you install GlusterFS server, it's going to pull in all the uh, dependencies that it needs. For example, GlusterFS libs for the libraries. Um, it will install uh, GlusterFS, I think it will install GlusterFS Fuse as well. I'm not sure, but I've already uh, tried this, so it might not show you all the dependencies when I'm installing it, but when you install it, it will show you all the dependencies. Okay, so now I'm going to install, let's let's look at the uh, GlusterFS server package, yum info GlusterFS server. And you can see here it's from the repository CentOS Gluster 7 because it's not from any of the official repository. And now we are good to install that package. Yum install minus y 
Gluster FS server. So in my case, you can see here, it just installed the GlusterFS server package because uh, for testing, I tried installing GlusterFS server and then I removed it. So when I was installing it for the first time, it pulled in all the dependencies. Uh, because all the dependencies are already installed on my machine, it's not showing up here. In your case, it will show you a bunch of dependencies that GlusterFS server uh, needs, all right? So we've installed that and now we should be seeing a service for GlusterFS. System CDL status Gluster D. So that's the service that it should have installed. Okay, so that's Gluster D, GlusterFS service, and we've got it's enabled. So at this point, if you restart your uh, machine Gluster 1, this service will come up, but I want to start it now. It's enabled, but it's not actually running. So what I'm going to do is systemctl enable Gluster D. And if you want to start it right away, enable minus now. I don't actually have to enable it because you can see here it's already enabled. So I can just start it. Systemctl start Gluster D. Okay, so that's started. Systemctl status Gluster D and it's running fine. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, that's all it's required um, on the first storage node. So we've completed our work on Gluster 1. So now I'm going to go to Gluster 2 and do all the same process again. So m install minus y CentOS release Gluster and then edit etc m.repos.d centos cluster 7.repo enable the main repository and disable the testing repository save it and install cluster fs server Okay, so uh, that's installed. Now I'm going to start the service system CTL start Gluster FS. Sorry, it's Gluster D. System CTL status Gluster D. Gluster D is running. I don't have any firewall enabled, so I don't have to worry about any ports. Okay, so we are done with Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. So now these two are um, independent nodes. They don't know about each other, right? So Gluster 1, we've installed uh, the uh, GlusterFS server package. We started the service. So there is this Gluster D process running on Gluster 1 and the Gluster D process running on Gluster 2, but they don't know about each other. So we need to group them uh, to a storage pool. So because these two forms, uh, together as a single storage pool, we need to identify each other. So for that, what I need to what I need to do is I need to add the IP address of Gluster One and Gluster Two to the etc host file on these two machines so that they can ping each other. All right. So now if I go to Gluster One and edit the file, vi if I just do ping Gluster Two. Okay, so because it's LXC container, it already knows about Gluster 2, okay? But in your case, it, it might not be the same in your case. So you need to make sure that Gluster 1 can ping Gluster 2 and Gluster 2 can ping Gluster 1. Okay, so edit the etc host file and go to the end of the file. And again, go to Gluster 2, etc hosts. Okay, so now I need to add the IP address of Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. If I go to my host machine, so Gluster 1's IP address is this one. I'm going to copy that. Going to Gluster 1, paste that. And let's call it Gluster1.example.com. And the short name is Gluster 1. And Gluster 2's IP address is that one. Copy that and paste it gluster2.example.com gluster2 and I'm going to copy this save this file and again on gluster2 I'm going to paste this 
Okay, so now I'm on Gluster 2. I should be able to ping Gluster 1. Ping Gluster 1. Yep, gluster1.example.com. I get a ping response back. And from Gluster 1, I should be able to ping Gluster 2. Cool, gluster2.example.com. So that's the, uh, the main thing that you want to uh, make sure that these nodes can talk to each other and similarly i'm also going to do the same thing on the client machine the client machine needs to talk to both gluster1 and gluster2 cat etc host i'm going to copy these lines and i'm going to go to the gluster client machine etc host file paste it and from my client machine I should be able to ping both Gluster 1 and Gluster 2 sorry Gluster 2 yep so all networking sorted and now I'm back to Gluster 1 okay so what we've done is we've installed uh, the GlusterFS package on uh, the Gluster 1 and the Gluster 2 and we've started the service We've added uh, the IP address of Gluster1 and Gluster2 to the etc host file. So now we need to make sure that these two uh, identify each other. They form a single storage pool. Okay, for that, the command is Gluster. And uh, notice that I'm running all these commands as the root user. So if you are not logged in as root user, use sudo. All right. So Gluster if I do a peer status at the moment you can see Gluster 1 is standalone it doesn't have any peers um, or it, it's not aware of any peers and similarly if I go to Gluster 2 and do Gluster peer status number of peers is 0 because it doesn't know about Gluster 1 so we need to group them together to form a, a single storage pool so the command is Gluster peer probe and the name of the other node so this this particular command you can run from any of the nodes in your uh, storage pool all right so I'm running this command on Gluster 1 so I need to give the name of the other node Gluster 2 all right but if you're running it on Gluster 2 that's absolutely fine uh, just use Gluster peer probe Gluster 1 if you're running this command on Gluster 2 so this command can be run on any nodes in your storage pool Okay, it says peer probe is success and now if I do Gluster peer status, it shows that number of peers is 1 and the peer is Gluster 2, its ID and the status of the peer which is connected. So now if I go to Gluster 2, the other storage node and do the same, Gluster peer status and it knows about Gluster 1. So now basically we, we've connected Gluster 1 and Gluster 2 and they form the storage pool. All right, so now if I go here, any commands like creating a volume or extending a volume, deleting a volume or any Gluster commands, you can do from any nodes in, in your storage pool. It doesn't have to be Gluster 2 or Gluster 1. You can run on any of the nodes that are connected to your storage pool. Okay, so I'm on Gluster 2. If I sh say Gluster volume list, no volume. So we haven't created any volumes. So we will be creating uh, the volume here and we can either create the brick directly and use it when creating the volume or we can just directly create a volume that will create a brick for us. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is uh, let's see if it works here as well. Gluster volume list. Nothing. Okay. So now to finish this video, I need to install the, uh, the client part in the Gluster client. So like what we did on the other two nodes, Gluster 1 and Gluster 2, I'm going to install CentOS release, so, sorry, CentOS release Gluster. Yep, that's installed and edit vi, sorry, etc, m.repos.d, CentOS, Gluster7.repo, enable the main repository disable the testing repository and now i'm going to install the client package not the server package because i'm on the client machine now gluster fs client 
Okay, so similarly, it has just installed GlustreFS Fuse package, uh, but in your case, if you're running it for the first time, it you, you can see all the dependencies that it's going to install. Okay, so which cluster, which is not found. Okay, let's install it. Yum install minus y, which, yep, which cluster, which cluster fs, cluster fs is there. Okay, so um, I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I just want to keep this video short just to show you how to install uh, the different components and connect uh, the cluster. So what we've done in this video is we've installed the cluster FS server package. We've connected these two nodes. Uh, so now we've got a storage pool and we've got our client machine ready. And in the next video, we will try and create a volume and so on. All right. So um, try this video. And if you've got any questions or any issues, let me know and I'll be happy to help. And I will all see you all in my next video. Bye bye.